Thank you so much. Um, first, when we think about pain drainer, I'd like you to imagine the person, a person living with uh, chronic pain. We can call her Emma. She has quite heavy pain on Monday, some weeks, and sometimes on Thursday, and sometimes for all week altogether. What this means is that she is occasionally unable to work, she can't train, and she can't get a social life that she wants to have. So basically, she lowers her quality of life. And, and what is really troublesome is that she doesn't really know what factors that are the triggers for her, her pain for a specific day. Then, imagine this. She is not alone. She is one individual of a population of 190 million individuals in the US and Europe alone. So this is a really large population of people living with chronic pain. Yet, the access to pain physician is quite low. And the persons that do, in fact, meet the pain physician, normally the treatment path is opiates of various sort. This means that for the cost of the society in general, it's large, it's not, say, enormous. We talk about 900 billion US dollars annually in cost for the societal cost for, um, for people living with chronic pain. This needs to be addressed in some way, both from the society in general, but also from companies working within the life science space. And that is where Pain Rainer comes into play. We have developed a platform for chronic condition, where chronic pain is the first product to go live. Basically, it's a twofold product. We have a patient interface, which we will come back to, and then we have a clinician interface. And we can, with our product, enable pain physician to understand and give guidance on patients and how their clinical efficiency work for the treatment plan they are offered. They can also see how much their different type of opiates work and how they can actually adjust, the, lower them to, to use other means of methods to aid the patients. The product in itself is reimbursable through CPT codes in the US, meaning that we have access to a really large market um, For a patient, we have a mobile application that is structured as a medical device that has a unique 360 degree patient centric solution. And what this means is that we use an artificial neural network where we collect data, but we don't use population data. And this is quite important, I'll get back to that. So what we do first is that we collect patient specific input. And this could be, for example, if you train, if you do go to work, if you exercise, if you do household chores, and we log how much time, the, the experience of it, or the satisfactory level, and the intensity level. We also log the daily pain for the patient. All this data is then bundled into the neural network. We reprocess it and understand what are your specific trigger points that can be, that can be adapted where you can give recommendation to then adapt your daily life. And this is the patient-specific output. And why is the 360 degrees important? Well, if we wouldn't use that and would use population data to say you are part of this bucket of population, that means that the subjective approach to pain, meaning that I have a feeling of my pain that might not be the same as yours, would blur the image of your specific recommendation. So that, that's why it's really important to build a network that doesn't use population data. As mentioned, we are a medical device, and this is also really important because the wellness space for pain is quite crowded. But the medical device space is not that crowded, and also there's a big distinction in how you develop a product that is a medical device rather than a wellness product. So this means that we have a certification in place to be eligible to sell in the relevant market for us, and we also have a product that is the effect of a number of clinical trials. The latest clinical trials we conducted was with Will Cornell and Newton Wellesley Medicine or a hospital. And that was published in Pain Medicine in the US uh, earlier this year. And the results were quite remarkable. And I won't go through all of them here, but just to give some view of what we actually were able to aid the patient with. It's, it's important to state that this is a patient that has been living with pain for some of them one year, others up to 10, 15 years. And over a 12-week period program, we were able to reduce the pain interference and increase physical function in three out of four patients by utilizing the daily recommendation for, um, for patients um, with pain, uh, pain radar. 
We also were able to increase the activity engagement and over a longer period actually increase the ability for these patients to get back to work. And if you remember, we talked about societal cost. And if you are able to get back to work, that reduces society, societal cost quite a lot. So the result here, quite remarkable. This means that we right now stand on the, on the stepping stone to go out and sell this product. And we will use a licensing model where we offer this product to healthcare providers with both the patient interface and the clinician interface. And we have a payment structure where we bill for the active patient on the, on the platform. And this means that we can forecast monthly uh, recurring revenue of around $45 per patient per month. The, the, uh, the company is backed by a highly competent and skilled team with uh, various knowledge, both within medical device, life science, as well as within AI and neural network. And also more importantly, or perhaps most importantly, we have experience through the team and the board on how to, how to launch remote monitoring products within the US, which is really core for us since that is our, our core market moving forward. 2023, uh, 2023 has been a hectic and a really good year for us, and I won't present everything that we have conducted so far, but some milestones that I think are really important for us, and, and also perhaps for you, is the FDA registration as a medical device class one, because this means that we are eligible to bill for the CPT codes within the Medicare system. We were also awarded the most innovative um, digital health app in the Nordics by Nordic Innovation, and also won the Business Catalyst Sweden um, scale-up program as the most innovative and promising companies for international rollout. So what does this mean when we move forward? Well, this year we start to commence sales. We have our discussion with the first clinics, we do our first pilot and trials, and we do a seed round of capital to, to move to the next Series A round. And over a five-year period, we see that we will be able to achieve sales of a bit over 200 million, and we will have around 60 clinics um, signed in our relevant market, which is primarily Sweden and US, and then in addition, a launch in Germany and potentially also in the UK. And we have chosen these countries due to the fact that they like digital products and they are uh, quite strong on remote monitoring. For now, for this year, we are conducting a bridge financing round of uh, 5 million SEC. And this is to be able to initiate the commercial phase to get those first pilot case, those first clini clinics, and see the traction of those to then be able to go out in 2024 to do a full Series A round that will enable us to get the larger footprint in the US and also start to get the footprint in Germany for a more scalable sale. So basically, we want to secure key, key competence in the US so we know that we have the right partners and the right um, distributors to, uh, to sell. We want to look at the German market to uh, see how we can place our product within the DIGA portal. And we want to further strengthen the clinical evidence of the product with new clinical trials that will enable us to get more certification of the complexity and variables that the product offer. The round is more or less filled, but there are still some ability to, uh, to be part of this journey. And, um, I would say that if you do want to be part of a journey that could bring a market for millions of people, uh, you, will, you would like to be part of a journey that has a unique AI tool to aid chronic pain patients without, uh, fur further from the opiate space, and you want to see how we can utilize aid for the millions of people living with pain, then Pain, Bra pain Rainer might be an investment for you. Thank you very much. Well, thank you so much, Eric. Thank you. Um, well, jumping straight into the questions here, um, how do you evaluate the placebo effect? Um, well, that's quite interesting. And when we seen from the clinical trials, we did, the, they were over 12 weeks, and we did uh, one survey after six weeks to see how the patient reacted. And we can see there, there is a difference, a slight negative difference between the week six and week 12 
for some parameters, which we believe are that in the initial feeling of the, of the product where we get, you see, you understand your pain and you think you have a good sort of basic behavior and that will trigger the placebo. But then after a couple of weeks, that will lower it again. So um, we think that given that you use it over time, the placebo will, uh, will vanish mm -hmm. and the, the effect will be as the 12 week, um, 12 week effect measured will, will be prolonged, so to say. All right. And uh, in terms of uh, compatibility of the app, uh, someone is asking, is it compatible with other, with all smart devices, uh, smart watches, things like that? Yeah. Um, not right now, uh, but we are right now applying for a new clinical trial where we will add wearable to see how they can, uh, a wearable can work with the product. And I think wearable is really good because we want to have a, as low barrier as possible to get high compliance in the product and actually get for people to log. However, it is important that the basic of the product that we utilize the acceptance com commitment therapy methodology and so forth, there is a real need for the patient to think about their specific situation. So you shouldn't just log and then think that you're done with the day. You should actually mm -hmm. reflect upon your day and do the analysis yourself on what are your pain triggers and therefore it's good to actually go into the app and just, just not just let the app watch do it for you. Yeah. Is it difficult to uh, get patients to um, subscribe to this? I mean, uh, getting patients to use your device, the, the app? Uh, well, as a B2C product, mm -hmm. there is a, quite some bird, a hurdle to, to actually get for to, uh, to log on or onboard. But when you provide it in a clinical setting that you actually have a physician telling you that you should use this as part of your treatment plan, then it's obviously easier. Um, and then how to get compliance, we can see that we, we need to get the patient to be active the first two, three days. Because if they are that and they understand, then they are more uh, prone to uh, continue. And uh, now jumping into marketing, what is your marketing strategy for the, for the product? Um, well, I mean, our go-to-market go model is to meet healthcare uh, providers within the US and Sweden to, to offer the product to them as a remote monitoring device that they can uh, provide to their patients. Uh, in terms of how we will market the product to reach those, I would say since we're a small company, we can't go broad in our marketing sense. So uh, different fairs, events, conventions, uh, trying to find distributors, mm -hmm. try to bootstrap as much as we can to actually get out in the market without placing a number of ads and billboards. Mm -hmm. uh, and, um, and someone here is asking, how much sales do you need to reach to break even, to reach break even? Um, I mean, it, it depends a bit on, um, on the size of the uh, clinics that we uh, sell to and also the, um, how, long ca sort of how long cash flow cycle we have. But I would say we need around 20 clinics 15 to 20 clinics. Okay. And uh, final question, um, uh, what classification is your app and how has your journey to com commercialization been affected by MDR? Uh, we are a class one medical device, both from an MDR regulation perspective as well as the FDA. And um, I mean, obviously from MDD to MDR, there were some, some discussions in terms of to understand how we can actually position it as a class one device. Um, I think one key uh, important thing is, is that we are not treatment. We are a tool for the clinician mm -hmm. for their treatment. So we are not the treatment to say we are a tool for, for providing that, uh, that aid for a clinician. Uh, so that's one of the triggers that places us in the class one. Well, thank you so much, Eric. And uh, yeah, uh, looking forward to uh, following you, yep. definitely. Yeah.